Ladies and gentlemen, this is Game to the Com video. We're going to be talking about AMD's new Polaris unveiling. Yes, we have two new cards joining the RX 480. They would be the RX 460 and the RX 470. So the RX 480 is, at least according to AMD, designed for 1440p resolution and virtual reality gaming. But the RX 470 is targeting high definition 1080p gaming. And finally, the RX 460 is going to be for MOBA games. So, for example, the League of Legends and other such titles. The insane thing is that the RX 460 will not require any additional power connectors. The reasoning behind that is simple. Its TDP is below that of 75 watts, meaning that the PCIe connector on your motherboard is able to provide ample power to get the GPU to function. You're going to get several different outputs, the usual smattering of ports including DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. What about the 470? Well, it's also based upon Polaris 10, but what we can see is one 6-pin power connector. So what the actual final TDP is going to be, we don't know, but it's probably going to be under 150 watts, but higher than 75. So let's say 100, let's say 100 to 125 watts. We don't know all of the specifications of the cards. Unfortunately, that's where things start to become a little tricky. We do know that the core clock is still around the 1200 MHz for the 470. And we don't know the pricing, but let's face it, it's going to be around 150 US dollars because if it was much more than that, you would be pretty tight in budget to go for it rather than the 480 and if it was much cheaper than that AMD would probably be slitting their own wrist so let's call it 150 ish US dollars uh, I'm using that as a placeholder price bus interface is still 256 bit memory clock speed is 1750 which means it's got 224 gigabytes per second what about performance well I've done some mathematics and looked at previous graphics cards in AMD's lineup. For example, the uh, two, the 270 versus the 280. And suffice to say, there is an awful lot of uh, wiggle room. But we're probably looking at a shader number of around the 1600. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, until AMD confirm this, don't be taking it as gospel. But it's probably around the 1600 to just under 2000 because much more than that and it's way too close to the RX 480 in terms of performance but even so that's an awful lot of compute performance and given what AMD have said in the past regarding the overclockability of the Polaris architecture it's probable that you're going to be able to squeeze the core clock up quite a bit and if it could clock to let's say I'm obviously throwing numbers out here let's say 1400 1500 megahertz that's an awful lot of performance. Whether that's going to be TDP limited or whether it's going to be actual dye limited and quality of silicon limited, we'll have to wait and see. And obviously, if you're on the fence of whether to buy a graphics card, don't pre-order it. Wait for the reviews and always go from that rather than claims of a company. The RX 460 is a little bit less known and to say it's less known is a massive understatement we have literally no information regarding memory bandwidth we don't know anything aside from the tdp it's probable that you're looking at around the 1000 shader ish mark maybe slightly more maybe 1200 ish at absolute pure most but even so it's enough to be able to run most titles at lower quality at the 900p 1080p but the MOBA games that you know and love, or the World of Warcrafts, you're going to be able to run those at pretty damn high details. What's quite interesting about this is that you could make a pretty damn cheap LAN PC without too much difficulty, providing you're coupling that with the right CPU and the right other components, let's say an SSD, and it could be pretty darn portable and would be absolutely fantastic for small form factors. Now, I guess the last thing we need to discuss, the last, the elephant in the room. You'll notice the wordings of the, f the fact that AMD have now shown off all of the Polaris architecture. That's free graphics cards. So... Yeah. 
there's a couple of things here. Now, whether AMD are being 100% honest about that, whether they are not counting the X's, so for example, RX 480X, but even if you say that they are not counting those, it means that most likely the 490 or above is going to be Vega. And this ties up really well with rumours that Vega is going to be pulled forward. So, essentially, back in the day, AMD released the roadmap, which said that Polaris was going to be this year, Vega 10 next year. That's looking to be not the case anymore. Um, some people are saying that it's going to be released in October, some people are saying September, some people are saying it could be late Q4. There are so many different murmurings, it's really difficult to know what's true and what's not true. And I, I think to a degree it's also going to really depend on NVIDIA and their ro roadmaps as well. Because at the moment the companies are not competing with one another, but that's going to change. As AMD release high-end cards, they're going to be competing with the GTX 1070 and 1080. And as NVIDIA release the 1060s, the 1050s, and um, the tie variants of those various different cards, they're inevitably going to start creeping into the pricing territory which AMD at the moment are going to be occupying with the Polaris lineup. In other words, I wouldn't say there's a ceasefire at the moment, but both vendors are very much focused on different lineups of GPUs. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, as usual, if you want more stuff like this, and we're going to be doing a lot of reviews over the next couple of weeks, definitely. So stick with us here at Red Gaming Tech, and do the subscribe thing, share the video if you've enjoyed it, and click the like button, of course. But for now, I'm going to get going, so take care of yourselves. Bye for now.